guys, welcome back to another classic movie review. I am today going to be reviewing the 1987 teen drama, Less Than Zero. This movie starred Andrew McCarthy and Iron Man himself, Robert Downey Jr. This movie was based on the book of the same name by the author Brett Easton Ellis. So the story follows Andrew McCarthy's character Clay. He's returning to his hometown in Los Angeles. Upon trying to reconnect with his friends, he discovers one of his closest friends, Robert Downey Jr.'s character, Julian, now has a serious drug addiction. Julian, you know, shows all the classic traits of a drug addict in denial. Many times throughout the movie, Andrew McCarthy's character, Clay, tries to talk to Julian and trying to yeah, make him understand that he's hurting himself and that he really needs to make an effort, a conscious effort, to try and quit. Another one of Clay's friends, or, or ex-girlfriend, Blair, and that was played by Jamie Gertz, she's also involved with Julian and kind of that whole LA lifestyle of the 1980s. As we all know, um, the decade of the 80s is heavily associated with the rise of cocaine. And this movie showcases that we've got a lot of kind of what we'd call maybe yuppies, these groups, very kind of fake and just superficial, you know, they're hanging out in LA, it's the, the, the trendy types, so to speak. Blair is caught up in the her you know, cocaine addiction, just like her and her friends, and she's clearly struggling throughout the film to come to terms with her own drug addiction and also try and be there for Julian. So in the film, we see Clay try to pursue a relationship again with Blair. We find out that they previously dated, and due to the fact that Blair slept with Julian, Clay walked out on both of them. He kind of disowned his best friend and disowned Blair for a short time. He left Los Angeles, he went away. He was very you know, distraught over the situation. He was troubled, he was in turmoil. And then only due to the fact that Julian's health was declining so bad, Blair didn't know what to do and called Clay you know, to try and bring him back to LA so he could help her try and get Julian off drugs. This movie is very dark, all right, let's just put that out there. It's, it's a fantastic movie, but it has a very dark tone to it, a very dark vibe. As the movie starts, we get a lot of that very, very quickly. It really sets the tone when Clay is having these flashbacks on the bed and he's kind of, we don't know the full story, but as a viewer, I was intrigued, like, you know, what's going on here, you know, what's Blair and Clay's relationship? And, you know, things like that. As Clay returns to Los Angeles, he gets invited to this party. It's around Christmas time. And, you know, clearly at this party, money is no expense. There's, it, I mean, in a way, it almost looks like a set piece, which it actually was, obviously. I mean, it's a real house. They use this location, but it's su such this big elaborate with all these monitors and you know you think it's like these people i mean obviously it's trying to, the movie's trying to get across the point that this these people this circle of friends these trendy types that julian clay and blair all hang out with their friends basically what they came from of their rich parents you know money is no object to them they have no issues spending their cash flaunting their money and having a good time so things get worse for Julian, Robert Downey Jr.'s character. He gets into debt with his drug dealer friend, played by James Spader. Things just get worse and worse. His own family disown Julian to the point where he really tries and makes an effort to get clean with the help from Clay and Blair. You know, that scene where Julian is trying to get clean and he's puking up in the bathroom and he's sweating and I think Blair puts a uh, flannel over his head it was a very dark disturbing scene to see a guy go through these withdrawals and really suffer like that Clay is able to get clean 
and get get past his demons and get past this addiction only to then bump into James Spader's character, his drug dealer friend, and as said, he still owes money to his drug dealer. So James Spader, the, the, the drug dealer kingpin of LA, ends up pimping out Julian in this homosexual gay orgy type thing. I don't know exactly what was going on, but yeah, Julian will have to basically sacrifice his body as he can't pay off his drug debt. You know, at that point, all is lost, and Julian has relapsed, probably to obviously, you know, go through the situation he was presented with, having to sleep with various men, strangers. He obviously uh, decided that he needed drugs again, so he relapsed, and then was rescued by Clay and Blair. And um, and yeah, this unfortunately results in the death of Julian. And yeah, I don't know. You, you you could you could see it coming, I guess. But the film gave you a little bit of hope at the end that Julian was going to get past this, only to then, unfortunately, through circumstances, relapse and then pass away. So this movie is a teen drama, and in terms of teen movies, this genre really expanded into the nineteen eighties movies like 1982's Fast Times at Ridgemont High with Sean Penn and of course in terms of talking about teen movies I'd be remiss if I didn't mention the legendary director John Hughes of course he was well known for a string of successful uh, teen movies like Sixteen Candles and The Breakfast Club but you know when I think of those movies they are all generally kind of light-hearted they have a light-hearted tone to them with less than zero you know, it's not only a serious movie, but it's a dark and truly haunting one. Growing up, I was a big fan of um, teen movies, especially the John Hughes films, Weird Science, um, Some Kind of Wonderful. Love those films, and I still do. But when you think about it, Less Than Zero is just like 10 times more realistic than all of those. If you look at probably the most realistic John Hughes teen movie that he put out, which would have been The Breakfast Club. And of course in The Breakfast Club, 1985, in that movie we do explore some themes of loneliness, bullying, suicide thoughts. Yeah, I mean, especially towards the end, it does get quite dark in The Breakfast Club. But this movie is just... You know, it's it's haunting. The movie kind of blends this glamorous lifestyle of this kind of dark vibe. It, it, I guess it shows the dark side to this extravagant, carefree lifestyle. When it comes to The Breakfast Club, when it comes to movies like Sixteen Candles, things like that, I can go back and watch those movies, or you know, if they were on TV or on streaming, I could you know sit and just check them out, you know whatever it be. With this movie Less Than Zero, I saw it years ago and I've always held it in high regard. It's a fantastic, fan fantastic film. It's probably one of the best teen movie or teen movie dramas that was ever made. Comedy is a background player in this. It's very drama heavy. Everyone gives great performances and everyone, the, the movie treats the audience like an adult. Less Than Zero sends a strong message you know going down that path of drugs you know it's a bad path to take there's also themes of betrayal with julian sleeping with blair while she was uh, still with clay and i guess with that betrayal aspect you know be careful who you betray because they might be the only ones at the very end to really care about you and in this case, Julian, as I said, he was cast out by his own family and really only had Blair and Clay left to take care of him. I mentioned the performances, as I said, everyone is fantastic in this, but I've got to give credit to Robert Downey Jr. This, to me, is one of his finest performances. I know he went on a few years later to get um, an Oscar nomination for Chaplin, I believe in 1992. And then years later, in 2009, I think he was um, nominated 
for his role in Tropic Thunder. I mean, if you look at you know Tropic Thunder, that role, and then compare it to his performance as Julian in Lesson Zero, this performance by Robert Downey Jr. as Julian is Oscar, nom- you know, Oscar worthy. He should have definitely got an Oscar nomination for this. And in a way, it kind of like I think back to my, like, wow, he was nominated in Tropic Thunder. Like, right? is it? okay comedy film but Oscar nominated eh really in the same category as Heath Ledger Joker uh, anyways that's a separate conversation but uh, yeah this role by Robert Downey Jr. is really fantastic and he shines here he really shines my favourite aspects of this movie I mean it's well shot cinematography it's well written of course it's based upon the book and the book itself is um, a fantastic read by Brett Easton Ellis but one of my personal favourite aspects of this movie is the soundtrack by Thomas Newman the soundtrack has never been I believe officially released by Thomas Newman it is online there is bootleg copies of it the soundtrack to Less Than Zero it's a fantastic film, highly recommend it but the soundtrack to me is one of the very best soundtracks I have ever heard in any film motion picture as I said, I watched this movie years ago when I was like 16, you know, and it stayed with me. And subsequently, over the years, I downloaded a few of the Thomas Newman musical uh, themes from the film. Uh, yeah, man, Thomas Newman just gave a, or produced just a fantastic composed score that it wasn't, it wasn't pretentious. It was haunting. I can't really, I mean, it's hard to articulate, but. If you've seen Lesson Zero, you'd realise just how important the soundtrack is to conjure up those emotional feelings regards the characters. You know, when I think about it, it is a very, very well-made film. And the soundtrack is just 10 out of 10. I know it's like nothing's perfect, but I will say a movie might not be perfect, but this soundtrack mixed in with the visuals that we got from Lesson Zero, it was a absolutely perfect blend 10 out of 10 I couldn't think of a, a better soundtrack to go along with it as I said it wasn't silly it wasn't pretentious and just the vibe of it you felt it was like oh I'm watching something very serious on screen at all times you know even when Blair meets up with Clay they reunite and there's this kind of love theme goes on it's very emotive very emotional I just love it I think it's a fantastic um, soundtrack and if you've watched the film already, you know, hey, go online, just type in Thomas Newman, Less Than Zero soundtrack. It's available online in bits and pieces. But yeah, go ahead and just enjoy. You can just listen to the sound. This is where you know it's a great soundtrack. You can just listen to those songs separate to the film when you're just, you know, walking, you know, having a walk on the bus, taking a drive, whatever it be it's a fantastic score and also when it comes to the soundtrack well we'll put the score to one side but um, in terms of some of the commercial songs that we used some really good stuff but I also want to specifically point out the very end when um, once Julian dies we have the song Life Fades Away by Roy Orbison uh, used and that was just a great choice a great way to end the movie with the credits coming up Fade to Black at the end of the movie we think Julian's going to be okay he's been rescued from this homosexual orgy by Clay and Blair he's sitting in the back seat and Clay and Blair are just obviously just driving along hours later they think Julian's asleep and they check on him and he's relapsed and died it's what it is you know like the lyrics life fades away and Julian faded away and yeah man it's just even talking about it now it's kind of gets you a bit choked up it's a great movie it really is the best teen movie ever made I think nothing's really topped it no I don't think there is it's it's just a brilliant film I don't think I've seen Jamie Gertz she was in Twister I'm familiar with that film Bill Paxton she was great in this you know she has this kind of like frozen bitch face look at all times but she has it she finds it hard to emote the actress but it just works for this character as this kind of false pretense that she hasn't got an addiction, she's okay, and Julian's got the addiction. I'm okay, I'm okay. Like I don't I don't need any help. 
but throughout the movie you realise that Blair, even though it's not to the extent of what Julian is, she also does need help. But the good thing for the Blair character is that at one point we actually do see her chuck a vial of uh, cocaine down the drain and that was her like, okay, I'm done, I've had enough. And I guess the only thing kind of positive out of this movie is that even though Julian has you know, succumbed to his addiction, Blair seems to have overcome hers. So in terms of dislikes, um, I really haven't got any. <laughs> I, I know it's like, this is, not, this is not a perfect film, but I really, there's, there's no real dislikes that I can say that's like, oh man, you know, really? Maybe we could have had more of James Spader in this movie. His character came in a bit later on once we found out the extent of Julian's drug addiction. Yeah, there's, there's nothing There's nothing I really can say that really sticks out to me as like, oh man, that took me out of the film, or that annoyed me, or I didn't like that aspect of it. It really had an almost perfect tone, and it really, it, it, that late 80s vibe You've got Angie, I mean, the style was really great as well. Like, Angie McCarthy going around, like, he's, he's he's never looked better in a film in this. With his, uh, you know, suit and tie. I haven't got any dislikes, but in terms of uh, ratings, I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10. I think this movie is, as I said, one of the best teen movies ever made. It does get recognition, but still, I don't think it gets enough recognition. It... Unfortunately, it didn't really make, it wasn't very impactful when it came out in terms of the cinemas. It wasn't a huge success. You know, it's kind of been forgotten, lost in the shuffle. But I don't understand why. Like, I understand Breakfast Club. It's very successful. Cultural fandom, everyone loves it. I get it, and I love it too. This movie, I believe, is, you know, better than The Breakfast Club. Yet this movie doesn't get, I don't see the same love online that I do maybe it's because of the dark tone and, and I will say this that it's such a good movie and it portrays the addiction so well that yeah I will say in terms of re-watching this movie again and again it does limit itself because it does have such a dark theme but nevertheless that shouldn't put you off if you have not checked this out please do if you if you have seen this movie let me know what you think what did you think of uh, Robert Downey Jr personally as I said this is an Oscar worthy uh, performance but yeah love to hear your thoughts 9 out of 10 less than 0 go check it out like subscribe